you know postmodernism is a multifarious phenomenon it is so difficult to define it there will be as many definitions as there will be proponents but still if you ask me which book i would name as the most important definer let us say of postmodernism i would possibly blindly say this is leothers the postmodern condition a report on knowledge now this is in english original book is written in french i don't know french you know this is french is greek to me now anyway uh, the chaucer's pride was also did not know but it is good if you know i'll try to learn i know a little bit not not much chaucer's pride you know she spoke uh, the french after the school of stratford at bowie for the fresh of paris was to her unknown as is chaucer that the prior spoke the french of a particular say tuition institution of england not the french of paris because she did not know the french of paris chosa knew because <laughs> he was there and then i mean he was very familiar to at any rate since we use indian english we may use indian french also so caliban paradigm is there but anyway i coming back to my proposition that book is the postmodern condition a report on knowledge by jeff rushwa leotard in that book while postmodernism and books on postmodernism are not easy to summarize this book is slightly different he gives us a single point kind of uh, marker of postmodern condition that is the disbelief in grand narratives what are the grand narratives you know those things mainly he attacks enlightenment but we can add say liberty fraternity equality progress human growth human development all these things which were thought to be global values uh, in a counter intuitive way perhaps we may include equality also i don't know i mean it's problematic so all these values came to us actually during Uh, more or less 18th century 19th century the period of colonialism and colonial modernity you must be aware by now that critical theorists and thinkers mostly do not call modernity i mean do not use the term modernity but rather colonial modernity at least for the colonies anyway but we are given this belief you know and all even the songs hum honge kamyab will be this is also a kind of grand narrative we shall overcome and all this though this is not i mean what he has in mind yes two things revolution so things like french revolution you know as soon as a revolution happens we believe that there is a change in society everyone believes in that those things happened earlier industrial revolution industrial revolution of course was not at all ideological and the french revolution you know the american war of independence even we can say the indian independence movement so all these things happened but in the post modern world no such revolution is possible actually so marxists are angry with lyotard legitimately they have the, the legitimate rights to be angry but i think he has spoken the truth because the world has become so diverse and so varied and also there has been decolonialism decolonization which i am adding to it actually he does not make it pronounced that is very difficult to imagine universal values and universal narratives so he says in place of that there will be local narratives you know let me give an example while the modernist narrative a progress meant say obviously meant universal technological progress for example but in some su- su- certain localities of india technological advancement will we adversely affect the local communities the forest dwellers and all that so there we must shun it though there is a global consciousness against technological advancement we got for ecological regions but i am here specific here so in certain places the andaman so you cannot have that kind of grand narratives right so for andaman people that is we need to have a local narrative say living in harmony with nature or non intrusion with nature so that is the specificity of postmodern condition end of grand narratives you know and uh, this may be compared with the global thing in further postmodern discourse global and local combine think globally act locally 
uh, though in the name of that most people mostly think locally and act locally i mean often but you know the mantra is that thing globally so end of grand narratives okay so that is the significance of postmodern condition uh, now this has come under severe attack from a person called habermas so we call this this in critical theory uh, philosophical studies and english studies the lyotar habermas debate habermas says that uh, you know it is unwise i don't want to say foolish because though lyotar is uh, not alive as eliot said dr johnson is a dangerous critic to disagree with so is also lyotar but anyway Habermas says that post let postmodernism come once we have the goals of modernism fulfilled. That is, let us have democracy, let us have equality, let us have you know liberty, let us have economic fulfillment. All these grand narratives we did not have. But his argument is even before we had it, Lyotar is banishing them. But actually, Lyotar is not banishing them. He says that uh, postmodernism is signified by the absence of this. So. I think we can borrow a trope from linguistics. Lyotard's approach is basically synchronic, and uh, Habermas's approach is diachronic. That one thing after say matriculation, then higher secondary, then be like that. So he says first it is uh, you know it is still necessary. He says modernism is still necessary. Habermas says against the <coughs> argument for postmodernism by Lyotard. modernism is necessary for the goals of modernism have not been reached and that's why we still you know there are points for both we still have slogans like our pm saying sabka sath sabka vikas why because vikas and development etc have been taken place and not only in india all over the world still we so first let us have modernism let each village has uh you know have its electricity whatever you know each people at least have minimum then we'll think about the collapse of grand narratives so we can also say that in final analysis of course you know uh intellectually i'll be more inclined though it is again a bit counter intuitive both are intellectual but still intellectual i'll be more inclined to believe what Lyotard says, but from praxis point of view, I am all with Habermas's point that let us have the goals of modernism fulfilled. We have atrocities on, you know, the the disempowered classes, genders, you know, so many things. We need liberation. We need democracy. All these things. So modernity is an unfinished project. Habermas says. So that is why let us first finish the project and then have the postmodern condition. You know. as if as if there is a choice again what this is kind of so anyway in brief i have introduced here what is postmodernism according to arguably the chief thinker or chief theorizer of postmodernism and also its discontents so we call it modernism versus postmodernism i hope you like it and you add on with your own reading